welcome to my channel. My name is Betsy and I'm feeling a little bit better today. I took care of myself all weekend, drank some tea, and I'm highly caffeinated. So I'm ready to make some big decisions. Choose my three favorite plants and share them with you. It was not an easy choice to make. Big decisions. Uh, but I did finally narrow it down to three and I would love to share them with you because they're all really easy to take care of and they're beautiful plants. So here we go. Hoya. If you didn't expect Hoya to be at the top of my list, you haven't watched my other videos <laughs> because I love Hoyas. I love them so, so much. And I'm going to show you three Hoyas that are easy to take care of and really easily found. This is a Hoya Cardosa tricolor. This is a Crimson Princess, which is a variegated leaf plant. And that means that, uh, so it, it, obviously you see that it's green and white, but the green occurs on the outside of the leaf and the white occurs on the inside of the leaf. So this is a, a Hoya Carnosa Rubra or Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. You may have heard of um, Hoya Crimson Queen, not the same plant. It's actually an albomarginated plant. That is a hard word to say. Albomarginated plants uh, are the inverse of this. So on a crimson queen, you would find white on the outside of the leaf and green on the inside. Well, the queen wears her white like a crown. The princess wears her white like a gown. Crown being like, you know, the outside of the leaf and gown being the inside. I mean, it doesn't have to make sense, right? It rhymes, it's cute. It helps you tell the difference. Hoya carnosa compacta, also known as Hindu rope. Um, you can see mine is really tiny. I have two. I saved two little Hoya carnosa compactas from, from the brink of death. I like to say that I saved them from the brink of death because it seems really dramatic. It is a little bit more of a slow grower, but it's beautiful. It's really interesting when it, when it gets big, it gets these long, you know, it's called Hindu rope because they look like long ropes and it has these beautiful clusters of flowers. And it's pretty easy to take care of. It likes warm temperatures um, and it likes to dry up tree waterings and it pretty much just likes to be left alone. You, it's, it's a plant that likes to be admired but not, not touched too much. I want to show you my Hoya Bella. I'm just gonna go get it. I'm gonna go get it. It's big! This is my Hoya Bella. Uh, it's quite a large plant. has some beautiful blooms on it right now. I got it three or four months ago consistent bloomer. It just won't stop. It always blooms. I don't know why I'm even trying because I'm still sick and I can't smell anything. <laughs> Compared to the size of the plant, the pot is really small. They like to be a little bit root bound. Apparently that kind of encourages them to bloom and in this case I can verify it encourages my Hoya to bloom because it's just always in bloom. Really easy to take care of. They just like bright indirect light. I never let the soil get too dry between waterings. I don't keep it wet, um, but I do check it kind of obsessively because I love this plant so much. Begonia. I love begonias. I mean, my, my name is obviously um, inspired by begonias, particularly this begonia, Begonia maculata whitey. It's, I just think it's a stunning plant. The leaves are incredible and spotted, they're cool. They got pokey dots. It has really lovely flowers. Not super, super fragrant, but if you do get your nose all up in there, it smells pretty good. It's an easy care plant as long as you provide humidity and bright, indirect sun. It's a bit shade tolerant because it does grow, um, you know, under the tree canopy, but bright, indirect light will just make it explode. This one is called a cane begonia because it, the stems are like really thick, like bamboo sticks, and so they look like canes. And uh, cane begonia is definitely my favorite type of begonia. I just love the sort of angel wing shape. This is my begonia um, tamaya. So it's another cane begonia, except a lot bigger than my maculata whitey. And the underside of the leaves are not that sort of like hot red crimson color, but it still has the pokey dots. Can you guess what my third favorite is? It's my staghorn ferns. This is Platycerium bifurcatum, one of the staghorn fern types that I have. It's 
It's an epiphyte, grows on the sides of trees, which is why I have it mounted on this block of wood and sphagnum moss. Very easy to take care of. They just need bright, indirect light and to be watered once in a while. In fact, it's best to air a little on the dry side. So uh, it, doesn't, it really doesn't require that much care. And sometimes I mist them a little bit to keep them humid because they do, they do really like a bit of humidity. They wouldn't do really well in a super dry climate. Um, and they're cold tolerant. They can, they can withstand pretty chilly temperatures. So people will often keep them outside until winter comes and then they'll, they'll bring them inside. This is Platycerium alicorn. It's a little bit different. The ends of the, it still has like kind of a fuzzy leaf. I'd say it's a little bit more green. It looks a little less gray and fuzzy and the ends of the leaves uh, look just a little bit different than the um, Platycerium bifurcatum. Same, same exact care requirements. Mounted, bright indirect light, air on the dry side, keep it nice and humid. It's a great plant. Okay, I know that I said I picked three, but I actually have four. Um, because it's Christmas cactus season. This is actually not a Christmas cactus. But it does belong to the same genus, Schlumbergera. It's a really fun word to say. Schlumbergera. There's less than 10 species of Slumbergera. This is Slumbergera truncata, which is a Thanksgiving cactus, and it blooms around Thanksgiving for Americans, not the rest of the world. Um, so it usually blooms from October to November. You can tell it's a Thanksgiving cactus because it has really, really pointy uh, leaves. You see how sharp they are? Me. A true Christmas cactus. Uh, Schlumbergera buckleyi has more rounded uh, leaf tips, so they're kind of like this, but without the points. They still kind of create like a half teardrop shape, but they're not so sharp. And those bloom in like December, like late November, December, maybe early January. There is a third type. You may have heard of Easter cactus. There is some confusion there. So Easter cactuses bloom around Easter. Like in, in early spring, they bloom. Some people still refer to them as Schlumbergera gardneri, but they're not actually sh Schlumbergera because they have a different type of flower altogether. They're also sometimes called Ripsalidopsis gardneri. Um, but now they fall under the umbrella of Hadiora gardneri. I know that this might just be totally uninteresting to you, but they are not a Schlumbergera, like they're not the same as this. But they are still really cool and they're beautiful. And the way that you can identify them is that, like I said, Christmas cactus, they're like this, but they have more like a half teardrop shape. They're not as pointy. Whereas Easter cactus, this is almost totally round. There's like a slight bump, but it's almost like just one round leaf. Oh, also, Christmas cactuses, the blooms hang down. Uh, when they do bloom, the blooms like go downward. Whereas with a Thanksgiving cactus like this, the blooms stick out kind of horizontally. So that's another way to tell the difference. I mean, you'll know when it blooms. If it doesn't bloom at Christmas, it blooms at Easter. Well, it's an Easter cactus, so. It's called a cactus. So some people assume that they, they want things like really dry, arid, hot. But in reality, they really love humidity because they're from southeastern Brazil and they really like a lot of ambient humidity. They're so easy to take care of because they, they don't require a ton of light. So they're really good for, for low light houses, not no light, but low light. They need long periods of darkness in order to initiate blooming. So like 16 to 18 hour nights, 16 to 18 hours of darkness will initiate blooming. And that's why they bloom in the winter time because the night is longer. Well, those are my th four favorite plants of the moment. I guess there was a little bonus in there because it's in season and it's hard to make decisions, you know, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about those plants, or, uh, or if you want to share your favorite plants with me, I'd be really happy to hear from you. So you can leave a comment below and I will definitely respond. Have a little chit chat, a little back and forth. If you liked this video, you can subscribe. I will definitely put out more videos in the future. And uh, I just want to thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Have a good day. See you soon.